um, we went over a brief example of how to create um, a web page that contains a table of data from a database table. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over that again because, you know, we went over it kind of quickly and, and besides, um, you know, it, it sort of bears repeating. It is something that's very important. First thing I want to do is I want to talk about the select statement um, to review that. Um, we're going to sort of build on this. We're not going to say everything about the select statement up front. We're going to talk about some simple forms of the select statement and then we'll build to some more complicated examples later on. Um, just for variety's sake, I downloaded from Microsoft's um, sample databases a nutrition tracking database. We'll play with that because that has a lot of data in it compared to uh, my samples which only has a handful of data. So let's start by looking at one of the tables that we will be using. And one of them there's a foods table. And there's a whole mess. There's, there's 63,000. So we'll get a good example of having some actually, no I'm sorry not 63,000, 6,300. But uh, we'll get a good example of having a, uh, a variety of um, of, of items for us to test, all right, and, and look for. So we'll start out with this. And name of this table is foods, and we can see there's a list of all the different um, items in here. A couple of things to, quib to quibble with uh, the database design. First of all, I would never use the food type as being full text. I would create an ID or a code of something and link that as opposed to having full text. I think they have um, somewhere in here, I think they have, I thought they had a something that showed the, um, thought they had a code table for that. It doesn't seem like they do. That's even worse still. All right, because we want to constrain that table uh, we want to constrain that value to a list of allowable values so that someone doesn't typo and, and put that in and so on. But we'll use this at least for a few examples. The other thing is this is not normalized in the sense that there are repeating fields. There are values for different nutrients that it has. I suppose that's debatable whether that's denormalized or not. Um, I guess what my perspective is is we could put in a list of nutrients that we want to track in a table and then if we wanted to add something, we could add it and, and that, would, that would simplify things as opposed to this requiring us to add another column. But anyhow, we'll use this um, for, um, for, for some examples because I just want to get something that has a lot of data in it, a volume of data. All right. So, the simplest form of the select statement is to say this. Select a list of columns, and if we use asterisk as a wild card, that means all the columns, from and then the name of the table. In this case, foods. That's the simplest form of the select statement. Single table, all right, and it will return all the columns from that. It will also return all the rows from that because we haven't filtered anything out. Uh, that's what we'll do sort of in the next step is we'll filter, we'll filter out uh, and only show some of the rows from this table. Now, if we do not specify an order for our query, we really, uh, the database will essentially give it to us in the order that it wants to. We'll give it to us in the sequence it wants to. If we want to specify a certain order, we can say order by and specify the name of the column. So we could have it um, specified from, um, if we want to look at some of these column names, food type, the name of the food, which is simply food, number of calories, whatever. We will, well, let's group it by food type. 
and within food type we'll group it by the name of the food. Now if you notice, they use, uh, 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 there's a space in that column name. If you use a space in the column name, you need to put square brackets around it like this. So, this is pretty basic SQL statement. Select star means select all columns from that table. Yeah, get rid of that semicolon I had before. Order by, and then we can have the column names. So that's our select statement. Now, how do we put this on a web page? We put this on a web page, there's, there's simply put three pieces that sort of work together. One of them, you have to define, you really only define once per database that you're connecting to, and that's the database connection string. All right, that will get stored in the web config file, and you only need to do that the very first time you create something that, that hooks to the database. So that's one of the things we do. The other thing that we need is we need a data source. All right, and the data source is the actual data that we will be pulling from the database. And then finally, we're going to need some sort of visual representation of this data, and that will be, in this case, a grid view. So the three pieces that go together are we have the data source, which is a, a non-visual object. We don't see that. That contains the data. An aspect of the data source is the connection string. That says what database we want to connect to. The data source will include the SQL that we want to run for our query, along with instructions to actually go and run that query and so on. And then finally, those get attached to or bound to some visual control, which in our case is going to be a grid view, which will produce for us a nice little table of data. All right. So let's go and, and do this. Let me go and create a application. I'm going to create an empty website. Again, I've done this a couple different ways depending on the day and my mood and so on. Uh, I want to go and create on the desktop. An, an application called uh, Nutrition. Oops. And I'm going to create it as an empty website. Because we created it as an empty website, we'll notice that the only thing it really gives us is it gives us the web config file in there. We're going to go in and create an app data folder. The app data folder is where we want our databases and, and the data to live. And the reason for that is the app data folder gets special security uh, considerations. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new folder called app data. And that's where I'm going to move my database, this nutritional tracking database. All right. After I do that, I'm going to click refresh so that it picks that up. And then we're good to go. All right. So I'm going to create my first page here. And my first page is going to be a page that's going to show a list of foods. All right. Now keep in mind, for demonstration purposes, I'm really not going to take a lot of, pay a lot of attention to the design of the page. Um, we'll do a few things to make it look good, but again, I won't necessarily spend a lot of time on that because I want to focus sort of on the database interactivity. So I'll go here and say new file. Web 
web form, add. Notice I'm not creating a master page and all that. That doesn't mean that you would not want to do that for your own project. Uh, it's just that in the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going through all that. All right. Now, I can go into design mode. And I'm going to show you probably the better way that I did it last time. The last time caused us a little bit of grief in the manner in which I created um, the database connection string. I'm going to go in and create the connection string a slightly different way this time. All right, my toolbar is thinking about what to do, or toolbox rather. All right. What we're going to use for all this data um, database interactivity is in the data section of the toolbox. Both the stuff that are the visual appearance of the data, the way that we're presenting the data, and the data source itself. Um, all are in this section. Remember that uh, this is sort of a, a um, really uh, an underlying thing of all, of all web development, separating one thing from another, separating the presentation from the content. Here we're separating the data from the database that's going to live in that SQL, SQL data control with the way we're going to present it. And we're going to present it in a grid view. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab onto this a SQL data source. And I'll put it on the page. Notice how it displays. It's not really a visual control. It shows it just on the page as a block, but you don't really get to set any appearance aspects of it because this sort of operates behind the scenes. I can then go and configure the data source. It will ask me, first of all, if I want to use a um, existing data source. And I can click no, I can click new. And it's interesting that it's doing this. I can can browse to that, and I'll browse to my nutrition folder and app data, and I'll pick the nutritional tracking database. Now, again, the one thing I want is I don't want this full path in here. I want instead data directory and I can test the connection and it will tell me that it cannot find it. I am not sure why it is doing this. It's looking for that in there. Let me go and Try to debug this quickly because it should be pointing to, for the data directory, it should be pointing to the app data folder. Let's see.
do a quick search of help and, and see if we can find it. It's no fun watching me debug this installation. I'm convinced that there's something wrong with the installation. I'm going to go and I'm going to set up, because um, we had this working last time, I'm going to go set up um, uh, I'm going to copy what we had in the Northwoods one uh, into this. Slash, hey. All right. So let's try this. Shoot. <coughs> ah. I'll save this as nutrition connection string. Let's see if this gives us what we want. I can then go in and write my SQL statement, which will, I'm going to use a custom SQL statement. So I will say select star from foods, order by food type food. Can test the query. All right. No value given for one or more than one parameter. Usually that means that I got the name of a column wrong. So let's go into access to debug this. And it's asking me about food type. And the column name is, looks like food type. It's actually food type with no space. They changed the heading on, on that. All right, they're going to play that way, huh? Yep. All right, so I can say by food type. And now I can try it. And there we go. And we get the 6,300 food items in our query. And there they are. All right. So I can go finish. Now, 
The bottom line, when you're done, your connection string, the path, should include data directory in there. Uh, I'm not sure why it didn't the first time or, or whatever. Um, typically, if you pick it from the drop down, you should see uh, you should see your database and that's in your app data folder, and you can just select that, and it will do it right. To cl click new connection doesn't seem to do it right. Uh, if you do it that way, you might need to go back and edit this to make this say data directory instead of the exact path. If you run into this difficulty in lab, I'll be glad to go over it with you. All right, so we have our connection string, and we have our uh, query. And now we just need the grid view, which is going to be the, the visual aspect of it. So we'll go in here and we'll pick under data, we'll pick a grid view. And we will select the data source to say that we want that SQL data source 1. And we get that. Now, I can go and I can apply some auto formatting to do a little bit with the appearance. So we could go and make it look like something that we like. Let's pick that one. Apply. Okay. And now we can go and run this, and we'll see a grid view that's going to contain 6,300 food items. Now that's a lot for a web page, right? That's going to be a big, big old web page. One thing that we can do is we can add pages to it, pagination, pagination, where we specify like we can choose to show a certain number per page, and it will only show that many. Let's make sure this works first, and then we'll move on to that. Part of this, I'm sure, is because of the slow computer. Part of it is because it's retrieving a giant chunk of data. So, should come up in a minute here with our giant list of data and our web page. And here we go. Oh, absolutely. We can we can customize the look of the of the grid view several different ways, and we'll we'll take a look at that uh, in a minute here. And there we go. All right. All sixty three hundred of them. All right. So. Let's go and do some of those things. Because obviously, if you look, it's picking up those things from the database. And we might want, you know, we might want to put things in a more descriptive way. Or we might not want to show, for example, the food ID, because that's kind of meaningless to people. That's just an ID, an internal ID in the database, and so on. All right? So let's go and let's customize the way this looks. First thing we can do is we can allow people to sort this data. All right. Now, part of this is, uh, part of it, well, we want to sort of logic our way through it. We really want to uh, make changes to the appearance. Therefore, we know that the change that we're going to make is going to be on the grid view as opposed to changing the data that we get. So, one thing I can do is I can say I enable paging. And what that will do is that will show 
by default, 10 items on the page, which I could change if I wanted to show 20, all right, or whatever. Another thing I can do is I can enable sorting. And what that will do is that will uh, make the column header something that we can click upon to uh, uh, allow us to sort by that particular thing, similar to the way you would sort uh, um, a Windows thing. We can go here and click Edit Columns, and we can then go in and change the way that it looks. All right. For example, I might want to get rid of the food ID because, as we said, that's not really meaningful. I can go and I can eliminate that. All right. I might want to, instead of having the header name food, I could say, you know, food item or something like that, something that's more descriptive, and so on down the line. Now, there's, we might want to have some fields in our data source that we won't want to display on the, the page, and we'll talk about that. For example, typically, you will want the primary key to be in your data source, even if you're not going to display it. So that food ID, we're not going to eliminate it from the data source, but we might not display it, so we can take it out of the grid view. So now it will go and it will show us 20 items at a time and it will allow us to sort by clicking on the, the um, headers, headings for that. So let's go and let's see what we have now. Now it's only showing 20 of them, and it shows on the bottom page numbers that we can go to. And we can sort. So if I click on that, it will go and it will change the manner in which it's sorted. lowest calories to the highest calories. All right. Questions about any of this? All right, to review. We had our SQL statement. Looks like this. We created our data source, our SQL data source. We created our connection string that points to what database, and that's going to live in the web config file. The data source contains how we're retrieving the data. In other words, it contains a SQL statement. Then we create a visual, in other words, what, how we're going to display that data. And we then bind the visual to the data source, and we can then change aspects of the visual without messing with the aspects of the visual of the data source rather. So we can add paging to it, we can add sorting to it, we can change headers and so on. We can eliminate some columns from being displayed or we can add uh, additional columns to be displayed if we want. All right, questions about this? Yes? Um, let's say I have only one particular item that I want to add. All right. Excellent question. The question is, is what, if, what if I want to find a specific item rather than display all 6,600? Then I don't want to use the grid view because it's only one. So I can create my own. So I have to use the label. Okay. 
Okay, the question is, is what if I know there's only going to be one item uh, on there? And I don't, I don't want a grid. A grid, uh, by definition, is a table of data. So, you, you know, is, is when you have more than one item. What if you don't know you only have one item? If you only have one item, there's something called a details view that you would go and you would use that instead of the grid view. Okay, so again, same idea. The difference is, because we're making these things into little components, the difference is, is, in, is the visual, instead of being a grid view, will be a detail view that will only show one. Now, you could do as you suggested as well. And you could go in and you could create your own uh, labels and text boxes or whatever. But uh, oftentimes, using a details view will be better. All right? Now, next question I, I want to ask you which is where I thought you were heading, is this is sort of um, awkward, right? I mean, who would want a listing to show up 6,300 items? It just doesn't, isn't practical, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add to this the ability to search for an item, all right? So we're going to have a text box on the top of the page where the user puts in some criteria, um, maybe the, the, name, part, the name or part of the name of the food item, and then the, um, the, the query when we go and run it will only show those things that match that. Now, what do we use in a SQL statement to filter out and not show every single row but only show selected rows? What, what do we add to a query? A where clause, right. So in other words, if I wanted to add to this SQL statement, if I only wanted to see where the name of the food was apple, let's say, I could say where food equals Apple. All right. Let me write it on another sheet. Select star from foods where food equals apple. And I'm going to change the order by instead of being by um, both, I'll just, I'll just alphabetize it from the start by, by food. That's going to look for any food item whose na exact name is apple. Chances are I don't want that though, right? Because I won't know exactly how it's stored in the database. For example, if we look at this, and scroll down. There is apple cider flavored drink. There's apple cider flavored drink. There's apple juice, apple juice, apple juice, more apple juice, canned apples. And if we looked on the next page, probably even more apples. Apples, apples behind, and all the way down the line. Now, I might not know the exact name of the item that I want. So I might want to do an approximate match. All right? By approximate match, I mean that I might mean that it starts with a particular pattern of characters, it ends with a particular pattern of characters, or it contains a particular part of a uh, uh, particular pattern of characters. For this one, I'm going to look for Whatever I put in the text box anywhere in the, the, the name of the, the thing. Because, again, it could be, uh, you know, um, if I'm looking for stuff with apples in it, it could be, um, you know, frozen apple juice. Or it could be apple juice, comma, frozen. You know, who knows. So I'm going to look for it anywhere in there. When you want to do that, and when you want to look for something that's anywhere in a column and not an exact match, you use the like statement. 
So, what I could do is I could do something like this. Select star from foods where food is like apple. Order by food. And in this case, the percent sign is the wild card. All right? So that's going to look for apple anywhere in the name of that food item. If I just wanted it at the beginning, I would do apple percent. If I just wanted it at the end, I would do percent apple. If I want it anywhere in there, I would do percent apple percent. Now one uh, side comment, in access an asterisk is used instead of a percent sign. But in this case, because we're using the .NET objects to, ac to, to go through to hit that database, we use the, what's the more standard, which is the percent sign. So we'll use a percent sign in that query. Now, I could write this. In fact, let's go and do that. Let's go and do that. Now, what do you suppose I'm going to change? Am I going to change the grid view or am I going to change the SQL data source? SQL data source. Again, I'm not changing the way I want to display it. I'm changing the actual data that I want to see. I no longer want to see every item. I want to only get certain items. So I will therefore change the data source. Go into configure data source. And I will go and say select star from foods where food like percent apple percent order by and then I said I was going to change the just be sorted by food. All right. So I can go next. I can test my query. There you see we have all sorts of things in there. It contains apple. And when we run this, we'll see that we have, um, again, a lot of things, not quite as many. We only have six pages worth of things, all right, whereas before we had, I think, ten pages worth of things, or maybe even more. And every one of them contains apple somewhere in there. Now, problem is, is we don't always want to search for apples, right, because you know, who knows what the person wants to be looking for. Today they might want to look for apples. Ne uh, next week they might want to look for something else. They might want to look for chicken or oranges or lettuce or whatever. All right. Therefore, we probably don't want to hard code that query. That's of, of very limited use to us. What we want to do instead is we want to put a text box on the page so that at the very top of the page, the user can enter in what they want to search for. All right? And when they press re the search button, then their grid view will get populated. So, what will the difference of the query be if we want to look for apples or if we want to look for something else? Well, we know that whatever we want to look for, we want percent sign plus the value of the text box plus another percent sign. So if we were searching for apples, we'd want this to be apples. If we were searching for oranges, we'd want this to be oranges. And so on. In other words, we want the percent sign plus the value of the text box plus another percent sign. Now, how do we represent that? We represent that by using a question mark. So I'm going to change my SQL statement to say 
instead of like apples, I'm going to say like plus question mark plus percent. The question mark indicates a blank that's going to get filled in later. All right? We'll get a screen then that we can define where that question mark is going to come from. All right? And then we say, well, that's going to come from the text box. All right. So, let's go and make these changes. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add text box and a button. I'll call this text box TXT food name. I'll change this button to, to uh, have a value of search. There we go, thanks. I can put validation in here, right? If I want to make sure that someone that they put in some search criteria. So I'll go in and I will put a validation that says must enter some search criteria. And the control that I want to validate is called text food name. All right. So that's the UI part of it. Now we want to change again the data that it's going to retrieve. And the data that's going to retrieve is the, 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 the responsibility of that SQL data source. So we'll go and make a change to the SQL data source. One of the things that's, that's useful is to really understand what role each of these perform because that will help guide you like what do I have to change. Well I want to pull up different data now. I don't want to pull up just apples. I want to pull up whatever the user types in. Therefore the output that I get I don't want to format it any different. So I'm not changing the grid view but I want to pull up not items that are related to apples, but items that contain the name that I type in the text box. So, I will go in my SQL data source, configure the data source, next, next, and I will change this to be And let me go and pop that in the notepad so we can take a look. Select star from foods where food like percent sign plus a blank. When you see the question mark, that's a blank that's going to get filled in plus the percent sign. Now, when we click next, we have to fill in that blank. We have to say where that parameter is going to come from. Where is it going to come from? It's going to come from a control on the page. Right? The text box is a control. Which control? Well, it's going to come from that TXT food name. Alright? So now, we specified sort of the blank in the query and we've specified what's going to fill that in. And we should be able to go in and test this now, give some dummy value, and see that it works. Try it again, put in a different value, and see that that works. All right. So now when I go and run this,
we get our search box and we can type in something. Um, let's look for turnips. All right. And sure enough, they have not even a page worth, so it looks like maybe a dozen turnip items. We can go and look for chicken, and it will turn up, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, it will bring up a bunch of pages worth of chicken, and so on. Question about any of this? This is, uh, l l let me, let me reinforce some of the key points here. Data source bound to a visual control. That's a key point. We're going to see that over and over and over again. All right. Um, the other thing is parameters getting filled from somewhere. That's another key point. All right. In this case, we had a parameter in the query. All right that gets filled in based on the value of the text box. We could potentially have other, um, other um, parameters that get filled in elsewhere. All right. Question. Yes. Sure. When I go and create the data source, when I put in my SQL command, notice that there's a question mark for each parameter. Okay? And it's going to expect me to, put, to, to tell it what's going to fill up that question mark, what's going to fill in that blank in that SQL statement. So on this page, we simply say that SQL statement contains a parameter, contains a blank that we're going to fill in. That next page is where we go and define it. We pick the first parameter and we say where we're going to get the value from. We're going to get the value from a control. All right. That means it's from a text box or a drop down or whatever. And the specific control we're going to get it from is going to be txt food name. All right. And that's how it knows that that is where that blank is going to get filled in. Now we could um, go and limit it further by putting in, um, let's say, a, a maximum number of calories. Okay, so maybe we want e maybe we want everything that uh, is apples or apple juice that's less than 300 calories or less than 200 calories or something along those lines. So that's what we'll do next. All right, we'll put an additional criteria on this. So, what do I need to do to do that? I now want there to be two criteria. Let me. I want there to be the name of the food the maximum number of calories, and a button that says search. And then the grid will be populated. Obviously, one thing I have to do is change to add this other text box, right? Because there's only one text box we want to. Do I have to change the grid view? Yeah, the grid view we don't have to change because we're not changing anything about the way we're displaying the selected food items. All right, the appearance of it, the presentation of it, stays the same. What changes? What changes? What specific food items we're pulling up? In other words, the data changes, not the presentation. So, what we need to change is we need to change our SQL statement. to be something like this.
and calories less than another parameter. All right, so that's the two things that we have to change. So let's go and do that. So I'll go here and I'll add my other text box. It is useful, I believe I mentioned before, to look both at, uh, get familiar with being able to look at these both in the source view and uh, from that. You don't just want to be someone that can manipulate the GUI. You want to really understand the code that's being created here. So I'll go in and I'll make the text ID TXT calories. Now, I could go in and I, I should go in and put some validation on here and so on, but I'm not going to do that in this particular case. All right. Now I'm going to go in and I can configure my SQL data source and I'm going to add to that WHERE clause and I'm going to say AND calories less than question mark. What's the question mark represent? Again, it represents a blank that I'm going to fill in at runtime. All right, I don't always want 300 calories. Sometimes I might want 100. Sometimes I might want 500. Whatever. All right. So that's a blank that's going to get filled in at runtime. Now when I go over here, all right, it remembers where I wanted to fill in that first blank from, right? I want to fill it in from that first text box. I want to fill in this other one also from a control. And which control? The TXT calories. So again, every time you define a parameter, you define one of those question marks, a blank is going to get filled in at runtime. You go back and you um, have to define where the data source is going to get the value for that parameter. And in this particular case, we're getting them all from controls, right? We're making a little search form that we can go in and uh, uh, enter in the parameters that we want. There'll be other places we'll get those from, all right, in, in other examples. Question. All right. I'm going to test the query again. I'll put in apples and 300. And it will show me all those apples that have less than 300 calories associated with them. So that looks good. And we can go and run this. So I can put in apples and 100 let's say and it'll show me those items that have the word apple in them that have less than 100 calories all right now if you notice here this is starting to get uh, th this page is kind of busy right it might be better for us to have a listing page that shows just a few fields for each food item, and then have a details page that will show you everything about that item. All right? So let's work towards doing that. All right? We should be able to do that today. We might go back and repeat it on, on Thursday to reinforce it, but, but let's, let's go and do this. So I'm going to go in, and I am going to First of all, edit the grid view. And I'm going to get rid of, let's say, everything except maybe the first handful of items. And we'll keep food type. And we'll keep description.
All right. Again, I'll go in and test it. All right, looks a little cleaner. All right, I guess we don't need description if nothing's in it. <laughs> All right, so we can get rid of that field too. Now, what I want to do now is I want to create another page that is going to contain the detail for this. All right. Let's think about that before we do it. Here's what we want to do. Right now we have this, and this displays a grid that shows multiple items. So this is our first page, this is our search page. We want to have a details page that is only going to show information about one item. It's not going to show a grid of items, it's only going to show one. So to the point that was made earlier then, we don't really need a grid view, right? We need a details view. So the first thing different between these two pages are, uh, or rather is, that the visual control is not going to be a grid view, it's going to be a details view, which kind of looks like this, where we're going to have the column name and the value displayed like that. All right. Now, what's the SQL statement going to be to pull up one particular item in the food? I'm going to say select select star from foods where how am I going to pull just the one item I want as opposed to all of them? Exactly, there was an ID number. If we want to pull up one row from a database table, one specific row from a database table, we use the primary key. So let's look in this database. In this database, the primary key is, primary key to this table is, the food ID. All right. So, our SQL statement is going to look like this. Select star from foods where food ID equals something. That's a blank that we're going to fill in, right? Because we want to fill that in with the specific food item we want each time. So, how do we represent another way for a blank that gets filled in? It's a parameter. So our SQL for this is going to be a question mark. So we're connected to the same database. We have a details view instead of a grid view because we're only showing one. Our SQL statement looks similar except there's a WHERE clause in there to pick only one specific food item. Now the question becomes how do we know, what, how are we going to fill this blank? How do we tell that second page, which food item we want. And the answer to that is we're going to pass that on the query string. All right. What is the query string? Is anyone familiar with what, when I use the phrase query string, what that is? Let's go in and Google something. If we look closely, we have the URL, all right, in fact, let's go and paste this into WordPad so that we can take a, a or Notepad so we can take a closer look. Here's our URL, then there's a question mark. The question mark indicates the beginning of the query string. What does query string consist of? The query string consists of an attribute name, an equal sign, and a value. All right? So 
This is one thing on the query string. Client equals Firefox dash A. RLS equals Mozilla blah 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 till the ampersand. Channel equals S. HL equals EN. It's probably saying to use the language of English for this. Source equals HP. All right. And so on down the line. Q, that's actually what I put in that text box. That's my query. I did a query on ASP.net. All right. So that's why Q equals that. And so on. The point is, is one thing that we, we uh, say when we talk about um, web pages is that HTTP is what's called a stateless protocol. What that means is every request is uh, an entity unto itself. Requests aren't really linked by the protocol in HTTP. Each request is sort of a standalone HTTP request. What does that mean? That means that one of the key challenges in web development is passing data from one page to another. All right? And one of the ways that we can pass data from one page to another is via the query string. Um, and so, what we want to do is, on our search page, let's say this is our search page, which is default.aspx. I'm going to make a link for each of the food items over to the detail page. But as part of that URL of the link to the detail page, I'm going to include on the query string what the food ID is of the item that I want. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make a link on that search page. I'm going, to, I'm going to change one of the columns to be a link. All right. I'm then going to make the link include the ID of the item that I want to display. This is where I said before, even if you don't want to display the ID, it's good to have the ID in the data source so you can sort of use it behind the scenes. Then, when we get to passing from this page to this page, this page will look for it on the query string under the name of food ID and it will pluck that out and put that in the parameter to fill up the details view. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do that. And let's first do that by building our detail page. So I'm going to go in and create a new detail page, create a new page. And I'm going to call it detail. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to create a SQL data source. I'm going to configure it. I'm going to pick the same connection string. I don't want to make a new connection, right? Anytime I'm connecting to this specific database, I always want to use the same connection string. All right? That way, if something changes about that database, I only need to change it in the web config file. So I pick that database. I go in here. I'm going to write my own SQL statement. And I'm going to say select star from foods where food ID equals question mark, right? Because that's a blank that we're going to fill in at runtime. Every time we request this page, we're going to supply it a food ID on the query string. All right? Where are we now? It's asking us where we're getting that value from. Now, in the previous examples, we answered we were getting it from a control. 
right? Because there's a text box, or actually there are two text boxes on the search screen. Now we're not getting it from the control, we're getting it from the query string. What are we calling it on the query string? We can call it anything we like, we just have to make sure we call it the same thing when we create that link, right? So to keep things simple, I'm going to call it food ID. All right. Finish. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to add my detail view. And I'm going to combine it with that data source. And I can auto format it if I want. And now I can test it. Or can I? What if I go and run debug on this? Pardon me? Well, no, I don't have the links yet. Yeah, so can I test it on its own? Well, not really, but I could go in and by hand type in the query string. All right? So, for example, let's look at the food ID of uh, 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 some item. It didn't bring anything up because I didn't pass it to food ID, right? So it brings up an empty screen. So let's go and look at one of these things and let's look and let me write one of these down. Four, five, five, six, four, two, nine. Four, five, five. 6429. We'll pull up the alfalfa seeds. Okay? Now, I should be able to go in and manually just put that on the query string, right? Food ID equals 4556429. And there we go. There's our alfalfa seeds. Of course, that'd be very awkward to do it that way, right? That was just for me to test to make sure that my, my page worked. You certainly would not expect anyone ever to do that. You're going to provide links behind the scenes that are going to contain the proper values in the query string. All right? So how do we do that? All right? For this, we're going to go back to our search page, and we're going to not change the data source, because we're not changing the data. We're simply just changing the way it's going to display in that grid view. So... For example, all right, this text, instead of just being plain text, I want to make that into a link. So I'm not changing the data at all. I want the same data. I just want it to act different. I want it to appear different. So my change, I'm not going to make in the data source because I'm not pulling any new data. I'm simply formatting it differently. So I'll make the change in the grid view. All right. So let's go in and make that change. And I'm going to go in, edit columns, and I'm going to delete the food item that's already there. All right? Because I'm going to go in and I'm going to insert a hyperlink field. All right? I'll click Add. I want it at the beginning of the grid view, so I'll hit the up arrow to pop it at the beginning. And now I get to specify data values for the text of the link, and data values for the URL of the link. Well, what do I want the text of the link to be? I want the text of the link to be the food name, right? So I select that for data text field. Now the data navigate URL, what is the piece of data that I want to pass on the URL? It's the ID. So I will go and I'll select food ID. Now here's the tricky part. It's asking me how I want to format the URL. All right? In other words, the whole URL isn't just a food ID. It's some words and then 
food ID. It is this. What do I want on the query string again? Yeah, we want the words detail ASPX question mark food ID equals and then we want the value of the food ID. So what do I do? I do this. I go in and say for the format detail dot ASPX question mark food ID equals and I put a curly bracket zero curly bracket. The curly bracket zero curly bracket means the first field in my list of data navigation fields. And if you notice, we could put in a bunch of fields. We could pass more than one thing on the query string. We only need to pass one thing. And again, remember us computer programming types, when we count, we count from zero. We don't count from one. So we use the zeroth element in this list. In other words, the one at the very beginning of the list. So now let's go and take a look. Let's go and run this. Let's look for apples that are less than 100 calories. All right. Now notice that that's now a link because I, I got rid of the plain text and I made a hyperlink. The text of the link is the name of the food which I made. And if we look at the URL, and we can see that down there, or we could do a view source, the URL says detail.aspx question mark food ID equals and then the value of the food ID for that particular item. If we go and look at a different one, there's a different food ID and so on. So, so now if we go and click on this, we get we pass that, I, that on the query string and we get that exact item uh, in here. Now, <laughs> this is something like uh, watching golf, right? Watching golf, I can look at it and say, yeah, it looks pretty easy, right? The guy takes a swing, he hits the ball, and the ball goes flying. But when you get actually out on the course, you find out that it doesn't work that way, you know. At least it doesn't work that way at first. So I know that watching this, it might be easy to follow and all that. When you actually do it yourself, you might run into some issues. And um, I'm debating what to do Thursday. We might have a little practice session where I give a, a problem and you go and, and, and create things like this, similar to the example I did today just to bring it in. Or I might go over more examples in here. I'll think about that and we'll decide for Thursday. Any questions? Yes? What was that you were saying earlier in your class where you used the wild card, the percent side of the center of the asterisk? That's when you're using a like and not an equal to. Okay? So when you use a like, the standard for that wild card for a like is a percent sign. Within access, you use an asterisk. But it's only for a like, and, and it's because you're doing approximate matches. That's not really relevant for this one, because I don't want things that approximately have that key. I want things that have that exact primary key. So I'm not using a like, I'm using an equal. But a lot of times on searches, you know, if you're searching for a name in, in LC's phone book, for example, you might not remember how to spell Zellers. You know, is it an E or an A? Is there an S on the end? So you might just want to type in Z-E-L and do a search. And that way you get an approximate search of, of people that um, match that. In that case, the SQL statement would have a uh, percent sign then. Um, all right. Yes? Oh, the, um, the percent sign is can you put no yeah each data source uh, corresponds to one set of data so there's one select statement behind it so what does that mean if you want two sources of data we have two data sources we'll see examples of that going forward you, it's okay in fact 
The one thing uh, students try to do at first a lot is try to do everything in one data source. Like maybe, let's say for example, if I wanted to show a student and all the classes that they're registered in. Some students try to like force that and, and try to do that all in one data source. Well really, probably two data sources is better. You have one data source for the, uh, the student information and then one for the student's classes. So if you have different like chunks or building blocks of data, um, you would uh, create a data source for each one of them. Not, not two databases, two tables within a database? Right. Yeah, we, we can do that. We can join tables in a database, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, either next time or the time after that, yeah. Uh, keeping it simple, in this example, I'm just doing a single table query. But yeah, a lot of your queries will involve multiple tables. All right, so yeah, so we'll, we'll go over those. Uh, again, either, probably either next class or the, or the following class. Other questions? All right, we'll see you over in lab.